Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation about SAF ALW68, which is the latest uh, wheat beer strain uh, that we have added in the Fermentis range. The strain W68 is coming from Weinstefan in uh, Germany, in Bavaria, and it's very, very well known in the industry for the production of uh, German wheat beer. It's been a while that we uh, have uh, that we started um, drying this strain. So back in 2006, we already started uh, the um, research and development about the uh, W68. But back then, uh, we were not able to reach the quality standards that we wanted. And very recently, the R&D has been looking uh, again at this strain and um, make it available today as the SAF ALW68. So the agenda for today will be to look at the objectives. So what were the reason why we started looking at the strains such as uh, W68? We will look at the characteristics of the strain, the product performance, so how it behave in uh, fermentation, and some key learnings. So the first section about the objectives and characteristics of the strain. As I just mentioned, the W68 is coming from uh, Germany. The origin of the strain is from the Weinstefan uh, brewery. So very, very well known uh, for the production of uh, Weizen beer. It is a puff positive strain, Saccharomyces cerevisiae puff positive, but non-diastaticus. So you will not reach uh, very high attenuations, such as, for example, SAF LW06. Uh, here you will have a moderate attenuation of 80%. It is uh, ideally fermented above 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you go higher than that, you will promote even more ester expression because uh, the uh, ent intense fruity flavor is one of the characteristics of this strain. It will produce a lot of um, isoamyl acetate, a lot of ethyl acetate, so giving a banana and an intense bubblegum flavor to the beer, typically what you are expecting in a Weizen beer. Together with that, you will have also a moderate phenolic character, so those spicy and clovey notes that you, um, you expect as well in in a, in a style like Weizen beer. So uh, this strain is very different uh, from the other puff positive ale strain that we have. You will see on the next slide, we will have a comparison of the four actual solutions that we have. And of course, um, uh, the strain, uh, this, this strain is not produced Using any off flavors, so that's what that was the the those were the main characteristics that we were looking for in the development of this strain. So if we have to compare it with our actual range of puff positive yeast, you have the first one uh, on the table, which is the SAF LT58, then the SAF LB134, SAF LWB06, and finally SAF LW68. So what you see. On uh, this table is that we have uh, two Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, T58 and W68, and we have um, two uh, diastaticus, so B134 and WB06. And then we can also compare the um, intensity of the uh, of the of the phenols compounds produced by those strains, and so W68 will produce moderate to high uh, phenolic flavors. So in the end, it is really the ideal uh, strain for the production of German wheat beers with medium attenuation and uh, high fruity notes. So by using this strain in your wheat beer recipe, you will have very complex fermentative flavors with uh, esters such as isoamyl acetate, such as ethyl acetate, you will have the development of nice phenolic spicy notes and sweet bubblegum notes. So if we uh, look at the product performance, so we have been running several pilot trials, several preliminary trials in order to understand how the strain is behaving. And the first part of those trials was done in EBC tubes. So EBC tubes are very uh, tall and thin uh, class um, tubes that are used to have 
ferment to run fermentation in very very uh, strict and identical conditions um, to uh, compare for instance several strains so this is what we have been doing here um, on two different gravity words the first one at 13.5 plateau and the second one at 18 plateau and we have been comparing or actual Buff positive strain, so B134, T58, WB06, and finally W68. The word that we have been using was 100% Bell's malt. The pitch rate was 50 gram per hectoliters, and the fermentation temperature was held at 20 degrees Celsius. The main uh, conclusions that we can take uh, out of this slide is that W68 is performing uh, very fast in uh, during the fermentation so here we see in green the curve for w68 starting very quickly the fermentation stabilizing at about four or five days to uh, the uh, final attenuation of uh, around 80 percent the same around the same uh, at uh, 18 plateau so we see um, a fast start of the fermentation and then around four or five days the fermentation is stabilizing around 80 percent of attenuation so in conclusion SAF lw 68 shows fast fermentation kinetics at both gravities with a final attenuation close to 80 percent then if we uh, look at the sugar uh, content, the sugar analysis. So on the left hand side, we have analyzed the sugar content in wort. And on the right hand side, we have the sugar content at the end of the fermentation. So what has been left uh, by the yeast. And uh, for SAF ALW68, we can see that there's no sugar remaining. So no fructose, gl glucose, sucrose, maltose, and maltotriose. So it is consuming all the sugars up to maltotriose and uh, there is uh, no um, residual sugars, simple sugars and um, complex sugars up to maltotriose that is left in the beer. For example, a strain like SAF ALT58 is slow maltotriose con consumer, so it will uh, leave maltotriose behind in the beer, which is not the case for W68. You have all the sugars up to maltotriose that are consumed at both gravities, 13.5 and also 18 plateau. Then if you look at the high alcohol at 13.5 and 18. On the on the top on this uh, curve at the top of the graph, so what we see is that if we were to compare 13.5 versus 18 plateau, we see that there is a higher yield in higher alcohol at uh, lower gravity. So 13.5 yielding per uh, gram of sugar more higher alcohol than uh, than it is at 18 plateau. But a similar observation for both gravities is that W68 is yielding significant amount of high alcohol, uh, both at 13.5 and, and 18 plateau. Even more interestingly, if we look at the esters, those fruity aroma uh, that you uh, would expect in the production of your German wheat beer, uh, we have here analyzed the aldehyde, the ethyl acetate, the isoamyl acetate times uh, 10. So for the for the sake of uh, high and better visibility on the graph, we have multiplied by 10 the amount of isoamyl acetate. And then again, at the top of the graph, the curve, the line that you see here is the sum of uh, esters. So first, if we look at 13.5 of gravity, we see that SAF AL W68 was yielding the most of esters in comparison with uh, the three other strains that we have uh, screened here. So a very uh, good amount of ethyl acetate and the highest amount of isoamyl acetate. So isoamyl acetate, which is the, the, the ester um, giving the banana, the banana flavor that you would expect in a Weizen beer. So in comparison with WB06, we see that we have around three uh, times more isoamyl acetate that is yielded with W68. 
at higher gravity, we uh, we see again that the uh, isoamyl acetate is uh, in higher quantity versus the three other strains. So more yield of uh, this a very typical banana flavor by using SAFLW68. Then if we look at the phenol, at the phenols, so the spicy clovey uh, compounds that such as uh, 4VG and 4VP, um, we looked uh, as well at the ethyl phenols, so 4EP and 4EG, but uh, a strain that is uh, both positive has the ability to uh, yield only 4VP and uh, 4VG. Uh, if you want to have the ethyl phenols, uh, you would need a strain such as, for example, the Bretanomyces bruxellensis, which has the enzyme to convert, further convert the vinyl, vinyl phenols into ethyl phenols. So here, not, not surprisingly, we don't see any ethyl phenols. We have only um, vinyl phenol and vinyl guayacol. And both of those compounds are higher the threshold. So you have here the line for the threshold. So anything higher than that means that it is perceivable in the in the final beer. So we see that for the 4VP and for the 4VG, we have um, um, concentration of those phenolic compounds that are higher than the thresholds. Same goes for 18 plateau. Uh, all of the strains are so that we can uh, detect it in the beer and be above the threshold. Here we're looking at the sensory analysis that was done on um, 15 plateau wort this time, same pitching rate, temperature of fermentation slightly higher than before. Here we're looking at 23 degrees Celsius. Um, maturation of, of 14 days at zero degrees Celsius, and this was done this time in a 50 liters pilot scale at the Fermentis campus. At, around this pyrograph, you have all the descriptors that were uh, given to the panel to assess the beer that we have produced with the different puff positive yeasts, so T58, W68, WB06, and B134. Anything that has two stars or three stars means that it is uh, significant. So it is showing uh, significant differences between the different beers. Anything without the uh, uh, two or three stars is uh, a tendency. And the main uh, key takeaway uh, that we um, that we observe here is that if you look at uh, W68, which is here at the center, we see that it was giving the less perception of phenolic aroma and phenolic odor. So less phenolic odor and less phenolic aroma compared to the other beers, exactly on the same recipe, meaning that with uh, less of those phenolic uh, compounds that are perceived in the beer, it is more space for the fruity uh, character to be expressed. It was also showing uh, less sulfury, which which is, uh, which is also another, another advantage. And this is very nicely correlated with the analytical analysis. So here we're looking um, at the analytical analysis of high alcohol, esters, and 4VG for the phenols on the, on the uh, same beers that were assessed um, by the panel on the previous slide. In terms of higher alcohol, we see that uh, W68 here was yielding less higher alcohol than, for instance, uh, WB06. But in terms of uh, 4VG, we have a very nice correlation because the panel detected that uh, W68 was um, uh, leading to beers with less phenolic aroma, less phenolic expression and this is what we see also a uh, good correlation on the uh, analytical analysis because we see much less uh, 4VG was yielded at the end of the fermentation. In terms of the uh, ester, so the fruity aroma and the fruity perception of the beer, uh, we see very very interesting things. So again, um, most of the esters have been multiplied by 10 so that we see better the differences on the graph. And what is interesting for W68 is that again, w, uh, the um, isoamyl acetate, sorry, here in yellow, is much, much higher than with the three other path positive strains that we have. 
So, for example, in comparison with WBO6, W68 will yield more isoamyl acetate and uh, less ethylhexanoate. So ethylhexanoate here in, in gray was quite high for WBO6. You will have less of this ethylhexanoate, but much more of this uh, isoamyl acetate. So more banana flavor perceived in a beer, uh, which participate a lot in the, the overall fruity perception of the beer. So on the key learnings for this new strain, the SAF ALW68 is a, a Saccharomyces cerevisiae puff positive. Uh, our recommendation is to use it at normal gravity, so around 12, 13 uh, plateau, because we have seen from the results that at lower gravity, it was yielding more esters, more higher alcohol, which are um, with, which are really uh, needed in a beer such as a German wheat. We also saw that the assimilation of sugars for this strain is up to uh, the maltotriols, which is uh, completely assimilated. The pitching rate that, re that we uh, recommend is around 50 grams per hectoliters, and you will reach an attenuation of around 80% on the standard word. On the spicy aroma, on the phenolic notes, you will have production of 4 VG, so accounting for the clovey spicy perception in the beer. And then finally, if you want to harvest this yeast, no problem, you can harvest it and repitch it. Repitch it, but uh, please, uh, we don't not, we don't recommend using it in refermentation, so bottle or keg conditioning, simply because of the fact that it is maltotriols positive. So if you have any maltotriols left from your primary fermentation, you may have over uh, attenuation and over carbonation in your in your beer if you were to use W68, uh, which would consume the maltotriols. So except for that. Really nice uh, product for the production of uh, German wheat, uh, Weizen beer, where you are expecting and looking for a uh, very good uh, fruity intensity uh, towards uh, banana, bubblegum, uh, balance with uh, some uh, phenolic notes. If we have, if we had to plot this new strain in our baseline, so our baseline is looking at all strains in a standard word, in standard condition, and then looking at uh, the neutrality, the spiciness, and the fruitiness. And W68 is here plotted um, very near WBO6, but as you can see, more towards uh, fruitiness and with less uh, spiciness in comparison with uh, WBO6. So more fruity, less spicy um, is really what you can expect with the use of the new SAF ALW68. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions on this strain or other strains, if you're looking for advice on uh, recipe, feel free to reach out to us and it will be our pleasure to help you on your next beer. Cheers. Bye.